Hello beer lovers, my name is Alexander and I'm looking for my favorite beer. Welcome to Leipzig. I'm standing here in front of the Thomaskirche, St. Thomas Church. This is the place where Johann Sebastian Bach is buried. Buried now, that is. It's not the first place where he was buried. Technically, it is his third. And it is the second church. The great composer was going blind at the end of his life, which is why he underwent eye surgery. The surgeon was John Taylor, an English charlatan. Bach survived two of the painful surgeries without anesthesia, but never recovered from the post-operation complications of the second and died a few weeks after it. John Taylor then moved on to London to make Georg Friedrich Händel blind, George Frederick Händel. Bach had 20 children, nine of which survived, but he did have them from two different wives. And now he's lying inside this church. Before that, he was buried here. Now what does that mean? Why would Bach be buried in the middle of a meadow, in the middle of Leipzig? Well, this used to be a church too, the Johanneskirche, St. John Church which was bombed at the end of World War II by the British and the Americans. Inside the Johanneskirche was his second gravesite. Why am I saying inside the Johanneskirche? His first gravesite was outside of the Johanneskirche in a graveyard, like every other normal person. Legend has it, his grave, which didn't have a tombstone, was located six steps straight out of the south door of the church. But they didn't leave him there because of the Bach Renaissance, yes, Bach Renaissance, that's a thing, in the 19th century, they dug out what they believed to be his coffin and moved it inside the Johanneskirche. After the church had been destroyed, there was a bricklayer who dug through the pieces of the broken church to dig out Bach's coffin again. Then he put it into a wheelbarrow and pushed it all the way through Leipzig to the St. Thomas Church, the Thomaskirche. And there he told the superintendent, that's the supervisor of the pastors, hello, I've got Bach's bones in my wheelbarrow. This is a true story. It was definitely the right coffin from inside the broken church. But was it the right coffin from outside the church that was brought into the church in the first place? His grave didn't have a tombstone. Can six steps straight out of the south door of the church really be considered an exact location? We actually have bones from one of Bach's sons. And we know for certain they are his, unlike what we know of the father's bones. So we could do a paternity test, but I don't think that will ever happen. For one, who will pay for that? And for another, what if the result turns out negative? If that's the truth, then nobody wants to know that. What people want to believe is that the bones inside the Thomaskirche are indeed the bones of its greatest composer. But more importantly, what's today's beer? Today's beer comes from a brewery a stone's throw away from the Thomaskirche. This is today's beer. Look at this fella. That bottle is huge. While you can buy smaller quantities of beer inside the restaurant, like one glass, this is the smallest bottle you can buy to take home. The other bottle I saw in the restaurant must have been three times the volume. Man, this better be good. 
Not because it was expensive, it wasn't, but because I'm going to drink from this more than once. Let's see how it looks in the glass. What do you think about the head? The foam is almost creamy. It's really clinging to the glass. It's not fleeting, the foam. And the pores, some of them are bigger. Some of them are smaller, tending towards smaller. I'd say the foam is fine poured. Wow, it's a hornet. Ooh, that thing is big. Did you get your sip? Not interesting. And gone it is. You wanna have a look at the pores? The head is quite excellent, was excellent. It has been fleeting away. The color, it's, um, dark golden maybe very very light brown the clarity is interesting this is not merrily milky anymore this is already cloudy even though the color is rather light I can't see it I can't see through it at all it's completely cloudy Now coming to the aroma. Mm, it's intense. It's strangely malty for a beer. It's hoppy too. That's not for a beer, for a pills. It's hoppy too. That's typical for a pills, but this pills is also malty. Interesting. It's very rich, it's very full. It's, um, it feels like it it, it feels like it conquers your nose. It's com and it, it fills it completely. And also it's fresh, almost like, uh, like fruits or like berries. Maybe strawberry. Mm, a little sour. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Now the first drink. It's light. It's not lean though. It tastes as it smells. Rich, full-bodied and quite malty for a pills. But except that, it's typical for, its, for a pills, for its type. And it's very, very, very soft. The freshness. It's pleasant, maybe vibrant, but not aggressive at all. It's rather pleasant. Subsequent drink. This pills is well balanced, very smooth and not dry at all. It fades harmonically and there's no aftertaste. Mildly, very mildly tart.
Again, it's rich. It fills your mouth wholly. Except that it is mildly tart. It is also generally mild. But still strangely intense. I didn't expect that. It's quite fascinating. Well, that's it for today, beer lovers. You see me in the next one.